Hello, this is Chris Gannon. Uh, I'd like to show you how I convert SVG animations to GIF format or video format. Um, one of the problems that I've faced uh, is the fact that SVG animations in the browser, if you've done them right, they will run at 60 frames a second. And one of the problems with screen capture software is that it only ever really runs at 30 frames a second if you're lucky. And uh, you know, if you want to do full screen HD or you know, or um, or higher, uh, you may not get the resolution you want. So you're going to start getting drop frames, uh, and you don't want that. So um, uh, I've worked out a little way of uh, of um, capturing it um, at a slower rate, so that you get more frames to play with, and then you can uh, uh, do with it what you you know what you will. Um, the, my sort of workflow is um, I use GreenSock for everything. You probably know that by now. Uh, and I capture with um, Camtasia Studio. Now, I realize um, that I can't actually show you how I capture um, because I'm actually using the capture software to do this um, to do this video. But essentially, there's nothing special about it. All I would say is set your... Um, your video capture software, your screen capture software to as high uh, as, as it'll go. Most of them still only go up to about 30 frames a second, so put it at 30 frames um, and uh, and you'll be good to go, really. Uh, there's there, there's no... Um, this, the sort of main trick that I'm going to show you or the process I'm going to show you doesn't really rely on having Camtasia or you know um, any specific piece of capture software it's actually how you set up the animation playback to start with and uh, and then how you process it uh, so I'm going to I'm going to use Camtasia to to capture um, I use uh, all my animations I do in GreenSock and then one of the nice features of GreenSock is that not only can you um, slow down uh, individual timelines, as you can see here, I've actually signed this, uh, I've the, the main timeline here, which is everything, um, which is all the timelines that my sub-timelines go into. I've said, well, actually, no, the whole thing is a little bit slow, so I've set it three times the original sort of coded speed. Um, this is this is if I hadn't done that, then this is what it would look like. And I kind of thought, well, it's uh, it's a little bit slow. I like it to be a little bit more frenetic. Uh, so that's that's just. That's just as how my final animation, how I want it to be. There is another um, time scale um, property that you can uh, edit, and that is the global time scale. Uh, and this is what we're going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the um, the t uh, the time scale of every single uh, tween and timeline in the uh, in the whole of GreenSock <laughs> uh, to half the speed. And the way I can do this is by typing tween max dot global time scale and I'm going to set it to half and you'll notice immediately that it's now playing at half a speed and everything is playing at half a speed you'll notice the little the little um, the the little characters here they now jump you know, half the speed and the, everything is jumping half speed which is um, which is exactly what we want see the problem with um, capturing uh, at 64 doing animations at 60 frames is that often a 30 frame per second video capture of it will lose frames so you may lose like the animation here on these little these little characters is very very short animation um, it's a little you know it's a little jump as the as the as the main character hits the the trampoline um, and so and they do a little sort of a ripple bounce or whatever uh, you may lose that um, that tiny uh, animation if you if you you know capture a 60 frame per second animation at 30 frames so this kind of this process I'm going to uh, I'm showing you is is hopefully gets around those kinds of things and keeps those details in which are really important. Um, okay, so I mean that's pretty much it. So we've halved the entire um, speed of the animation. I'm just going to save it, and um, in order to maximise playback, I'm just going to go into Code Pen and do um, look at my debug mode, and that gets rid of everything. Um, like all the all the timeline stuff and all the code panes and all that panes and all that sort of stuff, uh, and just has um, uh, a, uh, the the sort of plain web page with with all my animation stuff running in it and nothing else. So I know that I'm I'm maximizing it to the maximizing playback as much as I can. There's nothing else um, uh, interfering. Uh, right. Okay. So now I would um, if you've done any screen capture. Um, b before you 
uh, you may or may not just drag a sort of an area that you want to capture and then you capture it and that's what I suggest you do that's all you need to do you capture it the way where you want to uh, and you know make sure that you've if you want to loop it then make sure that you've captured more than your loop obviously uh, and so you do your capture um, and that's about it so once you've got your uh, so now what you'll end up with is a capture that's half the speed um, which you can then save as um, uh, uh, an AVI or a MOV or or anything like that. Um, the screen capture software that you use uh, may have great GIF export. Camtasia Studio doesn't have um, good um, GIF export, and that's why I use Photoshop. Uh, so um, if I if I um, go into Photoshop uh, and assume that I've um, that I've created a, um, a an AVI. Uh, of or sorry, a mov if you're on a Mac, uh, of that um, uh, of that animation at half speed, uh, and so in in Photoshop uh, you can um, let me bring this down so you can actually see the actual menu. So you can do import video frames to layers. Uh, wait for that to do its thing. Uh, I'm going to go into video. And I did this earlier, so this is I did I, did, I captured a, an 800 by 600 slow version and then just spat it out as an AVI. Uh, so um, in fact, let me just I can just show you. So if I just do open, if I open that, um, I just I can do, I'll just play that back. Whoops, I'll just play that back so that you can see that it's still it's oh I, actually that that's the that's the single loop. So I can actually loop that if I just do Control L. Okay, so that's your half speed AVR that I've kicked out. Um, the screen capture notice it actually didn't capture the gradients very well, but uh, that's that's um, I'll, I'll deal with that another day. Um, uh, it's probably best not to use gradients anyway if you're exporting to a GIF. But um, I found that doing it through Photoshop it actually um, it, it compresses gradients pretty well. So, okay, so that's my AVI. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open that. Uh, and in the import to video to layers tool, I'm going to because we've got it at half speed. I'm going to limit it to every uh, limit to every two frames. Hello, right. Um, and this will immediately double the speed again. Okay, uh, and make animation frame uh, make frame animation. Uh, if I play that back, you're going to play. So it's just showing you the original, the original raw half-speed animation. Uh, so we go, okay. Oh, and it's immediately done it. Um, it must have it cached somewhere because it usually takes a while. So let's let, let me just pull up the uh, the timeline at the bottom. You don't need to look at the timeline because everything you need is already in there. Um, you don't need to f um, mess around with any of these now. Safer web. Okay, so now we've got hopefully a familiar um, window open. Uh, so I've chosen GIF. Um, its color reduction is selective, and I'm going to use a noise algorithm um, uh, for the dither, and make sure it's on forever. Uh, leave everything at by if it's on by cubic, leave it 100%, 800, and then. That is literally it. So I'm just going to bang that out as um, uh, trampoline. Oops, I'm going to stick that on my desktop. Trampoline. And it's pretty quick. And so uh, let me just close that down. And I'm going to drop drop it onto. And you'll notice that the dropping the two frames has sped it back up to its original. And you'll notice that the little bounce is, is kept in there. Um, the all the the gradient is pretty much um, as it was in the capture. Admittedly, the capture it didn't capture it with a with you know a full gamut of um, of colours. But um, but yeah. So anyway, um, that's how I um, convert my SVG animations to GIF um, using. Uh, Green sock in order to slow it down uh, for the original animation. Slow it down with global time scale, um, 
capture it with any software, uh, hope, you know, ideally at 30 frames. If you can do it at 60 frames, then you probably don't need to um, use this method at all, but Camtasia doesn't seem to capture at 60 frames. Uh, so I capture it at 30 frames, um, uh, having slowed it down to half the speed, and then spit that out as an AVI or a MOV, still at half speed, and then import that into Photoshop as a video to frames, uh, and then skip every second frame, which essentially doubles the speed of the half speed animation, which puts it back at the right speed. Um, uh, anyway, I hope you've uh, found this useful. I'll see you again soon. Cheers, bye.